in the very beginning of sin's entrance into the world in Genesis chapter 3, even in the depth of the infinite offense that was, we see the grace and the mercy of God as he made a promise to Adam and Eve on that day that he would bring about redemption, recreation, that he would draw man back to himself, even though we in our sin deserve separation from God forever, that he would take the gracious initiative to bring us back to himself. That begins a whole story where God calls out a people for himself, and he says, I'm gonna show my grace and my mercy to you as a people, and you are gonna be a demonstration of my grace and mercy to all peoples. You are gonna be a special people that is commissioned to show my glory to all nations. And so he does that. He calls out a people, and they're known as the people of Israel in the Old Testament. And he enters into a relationship with them, covenant with him, where it's almost like a marriage, where he commits himself to them and they commit themselves to him. And yet we see over and over again, even despite God's faithfulness toward them, the people of God again and again turning their backs on him, rebelling against him over and over and over again. God, in his great mercy and compassion, never failing love, continuing to pursue his people, sending prophets to his people, people who would come bringing good news of God's grace and mercy, serious news about God's judgment against sin, but news of how God desires to forgive them and restore them to himself. But creation would take these prophets and would stone them, saw them in half, and persecute them and reject their message. Still though, they told of a day that was coming when God himself would come to his creation. All of that makes up the Old Testament in the Bible, setting the stage for God to commit the ultimate act of condescension and to take on a robe of human flesh and Christ comes to the earth, fully God and fully man, uniquely able to reconcile man to God. And he comes to his creation. He shows the life of the divine in front of us on a day-by-day -day basis, healing and caring for and bringing good news of God's love. And creation takes God himself in the flesh and mocks him and beats him and scourges him and spits upon him and nails him to a Roman cross. And our creator God says to every single one of us and every single person in all of history, despite your unfaithfulness toward me, if you will simply believe in my love and my grace and my mercy shown to you and trust in the salvation I bring you through what Jesus does on the cross, then I will reconcile you to myself. What Jesus did on that cross is he satisfied the payment for our sin, the wrath of God that was due our sin, Christ took upon himself in our place. One preacher said it's like you and I were standing in front of a dam 10,000 miles high and 10,000 miles wide, filled to the brim with water. And in an instant, that dam was let loose and all of that water came rushing as a torrent toward us. And right before it was about to overtake us, the ground in front of us opened up and swallowed up every drop of that water. In the same way, Jesus on the cross took the full wrath, infinitely holy judgment of God due our sin upon himself. He drank down every last drop, turned that cup over and cried out, it is finished. He satisfied God's wrath that's due us and as a result made the way the Bible says he made him who had no sin to be sin for us in order that we might become the righteousness of God by trusting in him through faith alone. We might be reconciled to God and now able to fulfill the purpose for which we were created, to know God intimately and to glorify God fully with our lives. This is the glorious picture of redemption that we have in Christ.